Hello and welcome to the latest tutorial in this series 2 of the Game Guru tutorial series. Today I'm going to open up the path through the gate into a forested region. To do that we're going to remove this grating, make use of a wind zone which links to the forest level. I shall do that now. So, quite simply, deleting of the bars, uh, markers, scroll down to wind zone, place one on the floor, position the uh, markers of the wind zone itself to encompass the entirety of the um, So what's happening here is I'm selecting the um, building that is under the floor. So just slap the point away from it and I'll stop that from happening. Position the markers in the entirety of the tunnel so that no matter what the player does, he enters this field. It doesn't matter so much beyond it. However, uh, I don't like this sort of contouring itself to the side of the rock. So... I'm going to just change that for my own sanity and put it back right at it. I'll just move this guy there. Retweak these like so. There we go. So, now no matter what the player does, he will be compelled. To walk through this grating and proceed to the next level. So if I select it, hit properties. Uh, if you just go to forest, I'll call it tucked forest. Apply changes, that's that done. I'm also going to rename this level I'm currently on because currently it's called tut 22 3, which is not very informative and not very descriptive. So we should call it save as castle grounds. I like so. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create a forest level. But wait, I already happen to know where there is a forest level. So if I head over to file and open, um, no, I've just saved. And tutorial one. Dash 11 was the latest incarnation of the forest that was created for the first game, for the first series, sorry. So I'm just going to load this back in and tweak it slightly so it works with this level. It involves getting rid of the bunker, and the scientist, as thought it knows would have been that welcome in a medieval setting. Um, possibly would have been burned for witchcraft, but we may never know. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is rename this to be save as forest so the wind zone of the first level links to the start marker of this level which I will place in a corresponding location so I intend the player to approach this section as is if it was coming from up that slope so I'm going to create a recessed slope um, and that's where the stat marker will be for this level. Now, of course, I'm just going to get rid of the futurist sort of stuff here. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to point out, because it has been mentioned a few times in a previous forum discussion, that utilising rocks in this way is not efficient and I quite agree um, because most of the time these rocks are not going to be interactable with the player on a physical level the player would just observe them from a distance um, it's especially true of the cave roof over there I'm just getting rid of all the futuristic stuff now I don't want to do a range select because last time I did that I accidentally caught up half my trees and I spent quite a lot of time on these trees, so I'm not that eager to get rid of them. I'm going to actually leave those chairs there. There's nothing wrong with those chairs, they've just been left over from somebody. 
what else isn't supposed to be here? Did I already get rid of the satire? Get rid of him for now. We can introduce plot elements later. I just want to tweet the scene. Yeah, um, rocks used like this is good. This is enhancement of the scene. It allows a player to feel immersed. Rocks like that. As far as level optimization goes, it's not the best. So I am going to get rid of them. And I'm going to redo it in a little bit more efficient way than I did here. And I will do range select because on a top down view, it's hard for it to go awry. Notice I said hard, not impossible. So I'll leave that open. I'm going to smooth off this because I might just leave it as a canyon. Um, in fact, maybe this is where the play could enter the valley. It's already been hewn. Um, hmm. Yeah. No, I like my leg. I don't want to lose my leg. I want it coming up near here. So maybe I'll cut a cleft in the rock here next to my um, raised land. So I'll still need to smooth this off. So, increase receptacle, apply a very large smoothing brush over everything. Um, just I don't know why I'm doing the outside, that doesn't matter so much, just the inside. I just want it nice and smooth. Because um, you may eventually find yourself doing this with your games, going back and changing entire sections which don't work too well. Um, for example, if I, if I had left that cave, you would have experienced quite a lot of slowdown because every rock is physically existing in the scene takes up resources in terms of collision, um, well, mostly collision, and to have all those up there didn't really serve the purpose. I mean, it might have looked nice, but it's not effective. So I will come back to this later because that deserves a video to itself. I just want to build my entrance of this zone because that's what I'm here for today. So I'm going to have it here. So if I take my level brush, make that a bit smaller, it's much too big. Come in a bit so I can see. If I take that level and I cut through the mountains at a curved angle, I'll come at it from behind this thing, like so. And then I'm going to make it into a slope. Because the player won't use all of this slope. Just use some of it. Now, I'd use the top down. But the top view is not that great for slopes. Because it's really hard to tell. I want to take this down now. It's as low as it'll go. Before it hits the water. I want to raise that up. A little bit because that's where I want it to go to. Level it off, then ramp from there to there, and that will create a ramp upwards into the mountains. And now I've got the basics of it done. I'm going to smooth it off a bit because, yay! Okay, increase size and just let it smooth. Um, as I said, I won't need all of this. I just want it to curve around the rocks. and It's not actually doing that yet. So I guess I'll do that now, actually. Before I get too involved. Let's have it going this way, actually. If I have this slope going to there, that slope going to there, and that slope going to there, that should give me a gradient and a curvature. I want that a bit lower down. I want to get to the water line without actually being in the water. So I'll smooth all that off and that's where I'll curve to. Make sure I don't get the mountains because that will give me some false height. There we go. I'll make that a bit more. See what I sent about false height. I just snaggled a bit of mountain then. From there 
to the from the to the and then smooth so I guess this could lose a bit of height bring this up here so there's no crevices on the sides smooth that down and then work on this again now I can go top down here because I'm just working on smoothing this will give me a nice view of the surrounding mountains as well as the slope now I'm going to put some trees lining this path and I want to make that a little bit wider because that's not big enough to be the path that I want it to be uh, so I will take the smooth out brush um, no, sorry, smooth out brush, the level mod brush and just level out the path in steps like this so I can get a much smoother more controlled curve without severely upsetting the mountains so that looks like this and maybe I can merge that onto that so I'll take a ramp and go from here to there I can smooth that out a bit I've got a nice bit of a, a mini cliff here trees in my way but never mind yeah that's a bit nice so the path could um, degrade slightly yeah now while I'm doing this I just want to make sure there's no excessive stretching of textures because on a cliff this steep there's not a lot of um, material to work with to make it smooth and I don't want to lose too much of my path so I'm generating too gentle the slope of the mountain this is supposed to be going between two mountains and that's about right that is I kind of like that now for continuity's sake I will take the floor texture I had that I used in the previous video that I'd used to make the road that was on paint texture and it was the last one but this is also the texture I use at the bottom of lakes as you can see because I think it looks quite nice under the water but it also makes a surprisingly good path so that's why I'm using it here so I bring that over here like this and just make the path as it would be and here as well the player probably wouldn't see this bit I'm going to introduce something to stop the player going back um, because I don't want the player running loose into the world and when we get to about here I'm going to change up the texture so it blends better with this lovely dirt kind of rough soil texture which is around here so I'm going to just use single clicks to do a gentle blend to try and merge it together so the path naturally peters out at the edge and becomes the nicer um, smoother softer dirt texture like so still a bit rough maybe one more <coughs> uh, a bit too harsh and just nibble into the path a little bit at the sides because this is where the path starts breaking down becoming less of a path and more of a, a forest so the path of the forest why a path would lead into a why a castle would lead into a forest i'm not sure but i'm sure it would make sense if you build the narrative for it to make sense right that'll do i like that there's an edge there i don't like so i'm just going to just get rid of that smooth it a little bit more but that is nice I'm liking that so I will have the player emerging into the scene here that's where the player will enter the scene and I want to continue these mountains like that
So I would build that out and maybe have um, lots of trees to show that the path goes into the trees and the wind zone would be positioned around about here so the player fades to the next scene before he gets too far where he shouldn't be going. In fact, if I have that bending around again, like that, that creates a, a natural curve so the player can't see too far into the distance. So the player would come around here and then enter the zone so the path curves around so the player doesn't see that there's nothing actually else there. This bit, maybe we could put trees here or expand the mountains to a small cliff, a small um, uh, raised, yeah, I suppose a cliff, just to give the the terrain a bit more more definition. Let's smooth that out a bit in a minute. I'm just getting the rough shape. It's like um, like creating a rough thing out of plasticine before you start, or clay, before you start on the actual uh, details, you know, flesh, fleshing out, that's what it's called, just fleshing out the shape before I smooth it out. Let's do it like this with my smooth brush, ever the friendly smooth brush, and increase the size of the receptacle, and just do one side at a time, otherwise you may severely affect the level of the path in between, because um, it would try to raise up to meet the top of the cliff and I want to maintain the integrity of the path as much as possible I just want to smooth out the side of these mountains that's what I'm focusing my attention on if I press G I get a better view of all this and then I can just work on this side of the mountain just hold down the button and just paint it on back and forth smearing out the rough edges and the same here you can markedly see the difference between the smoother bit and the harsh bit. And you just want to get rid of the nastiest of the curves. Um, you can always go back and tweak and change and just keep applying until it's perfect. But for rough shapes, this is okay. Now this is the path going around the corner into the um, back to the castle. And that's a big sticky out bit. Let's incorporate that. The player would never see that actually, it's too far in the corner. And as for this, if we press E to go back to our entity mode, and then stretch these stars to cover the entirety of the path so the player cannot sneak past, bearing in mind they will contour to the floor. So if you put one on top of the mountain, you're going to create an odd shape. So keep them on floor level. like so, and then go into the properties and select, if used, castle, I can't spell, castle grounds, enter, accept, apply changes. So now, once the player starts here, you can see something nice around the edges, but if you change your mind, you just turn around, back down the hill, and back to the castle.